Both of these are the only two cases on the market. If you go on Amazon, they're not officially from DJI, but these are the only ones available for you right now if you're looking to take your device out into water or more extreme terrain. Um, so today we're just gonna go through the build quality features, usability, and my own design critiques with them both since they are interesting. They are both very interesting to say the least. So um, first to cover what they have in common, they're both third-party products, not affiliated with DJI. They're made of the same material, um, come with the similar accessories seen below. Uh, so this shell casing kind of comes with uh, two potential mounts, the anti-fog, some wipes, and the same with this dome casing comes with a single mount and anti-fog as well. So unboxing is nothing to be desired, so I'm not gonna waste your time, but I'll, maybe I'll, I'll show some like fast forward of what that really looks like. But when it comes to both of these, first let's gonna talk about the dome case. I'm gonna start through and discuss the build, kind of both made of that same plastic. It comes with those accessories I mentioned, and um, it has two mounting points, one at the base, one at the side here. So if you have that, that buoyant handle, whatever the case may be, you have the option to mount from either or. And it has the silicone top to at least give you some good protection of the of this dome here, uh, since that's where your camera is going to sit and you're going to have a full nice view all around. So with how it comes to, to actually load your camera in itself, this is a kind of a, a three piece setup here. Your dome is removable. You have a rubber grip around this, uh, I guess this <laughs> twisting piece and you have, oops, and you have one single gasket uh, that pretty much is there to keep the water out. That's the only seal. So we're just gonna go ahead and load the camera in right now to see what that really looks like. Uh, crater combo here, and also this is probably one of the better cases off Amazon. Still holds everything, including uh, lenses too. So definitely would check that out. But going back into this case, um, one thing to note is that you do have a few uh, pads here just to kind of keep keep the camera stabilized when you push it in. And all you have to do is just slide this in directly down. It does require a little press there uh, from the base, but once it's secure, all you have to do next is just slide your camera on, tighten this up, and you're good to go. You have these two buttons. I guess one to actually record, and if you triple tap, you could definitely turn your gimbal around. Um, but when it comes to the function of like how it is in the water, I'm gonna do a jump cut and just, you could kind of see. Hey, it's me in post. So initially I just kind of tossed these in um, and then held them underwater just to see if any air bubbles were escaping. You're not seeing that footage here exactly just to save you the time, but uh, the seal was pretty strong um, right off the rip. And then later on, I just kind of submerge it and just move it around to pan just to see how that angle is. And then uh, adjust the gimbal or adjust the angle to tilt. Um, make sure you have the right settings. We'll touch on that in the later on in the video, but you can see here once I tilt it, uh, the frame is going to capture some of the case itself. So definitely something you want to avoid, but overall pretty solid water test. Also your mic will probably disconnect. My wireless mic did with testing both of these. Um, and next up, we're just going to see what it sounds like talking while the case is on. And big surprise, you don't hear much. Overall solid build. But uh, now as we go backwards, I'm going to start to kind of critique a few things that I find as issues, as potential, potentially wrong with this. One is going to be, since this is a kind of a three-part assembly, um, you're pretty much dependent on one single O-ring. Um, if you, any chance you over tighten this, there's a crack in this piece, uh, you're, you're pretty much done at that point, which is fairly, pretty unfortunate. You'd think there would be maybe an additional O-ring, maybe that's like uh, sealed or fastened to this uh, dome piece or something that sits a long line in there, but this is this single O-ring right here is the only thing keeping your uh, seal water tight. So that's kind of one one thing to be aware of. Um, while this is a dome shape, 
it can cause some issues with your footage, so we'll kind of see that there. And here I'm just swaying left to right, up and down, uh, forcing the gimbal to move around. But you, if you look at the top by the lights, you kind of see some of that distortion from the dome that is caused. I'm sure if I kind of centered the gimbal again, um, it was centered in this whole test here, but you, you get the idea. It's not a perfect view, but for something being waterproof, better than nothing. Also, drop a like and a sub while you're here, you know? Help your boy out. When it comes to removing it, you do have to grab it by the base of the gimbal, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I guess beggars can't be choosers here. Um, and then another piece is that with these paddings you see, over time, these are definitely going to wear wear down, um, kind of flatten out. So you're not going to have that secure feel uh, once you, after a few uses, after sliding this in and out over uh, the course of time there. Um, but other than that, for the money, this is at like a $30, $35, $40 price point. Um, it's not bad. You, have, you throw your anti-fog in there if you need to, but this... Um, it does get the job done, nonetheless. Um, next, jumping into the, the actual shell case, um, as said before, same, same material, um, but the design very much similar to what you expect with the GoPro. Uh, and the seal is nice, uh, much nicer than what you feel with the other one. You have two, two clamps to lock it down. It'd be nice if they had some additional downforce, but Let's pop our camera in as well. The only, the biggest difference you see here is that um, definitely the shape. Instead of just three, two buttons, you have three, one dedicated for your actual, your uh, front facing camera. Um, those pads you saw on the other one, we have one at the top and bottom just to kind of keep, keep them in line. And they do seem much more, a little more thicker, not gonna put too much faith in them. And once we clamp them in, power on our device, we're gonna use that dedicated button there to flip it around. Um, and there we go, it's fastened in here. Fairly nice, uh, you have one, one mounting point opposed to the two we saw on the other one. And one flaw with both of these cases is that your point of view can definitely be interrupted by everything you see here on this end and anything and any weird refractions or reflections you get with this dome. So with the settings that are recommended on the left hand side for the gimbal modes, I stuck with FPV for the test you're seeing, but between that and tilt lock to probably preferred and with the rotational speed on the right hand side, I stuck to using fast just to make sure we had quick adjustments and nothing was getting ruined in the frame if I was moving around too much. So kind of stepping through the cons of this case, definitely it's going to be the overall shape that we have here. Uh, I don't, not, not too sure why they added in some of this extra little design here, but it, it just often just gets in the way of your shots. So you want to make sure uh, you have the proper settings on there just so your gimbal isn't uh, either facing up or rotating depending on the orientation that you, you're holding this in. And as, and as I said before, we're going to cut through some B-roll of the water test so you can see how this sounds as well. And then we're going to jump into kind of the final thoughts with them both. So similar to the what I did with the dome case, with this shell case, I just tossed it in there as well. Um, and not as balanced with the buoyancy aspects as the other, so you can't get that kind of cool footage. But when I held this underwater, shook it around, still just as stable. And on the aspect of me just kind of holding it still, I wish I was in um, tilt locked to do a comparison, but footage was still just as clear. That reflection from the top was tough to avoid, but hey, better than nothing. And now onto the sound test, similar to before, you hear basically nothing. Now with the views of this in the case, you are seeing some reflection from the top. I am swaying it in FPV mode, um, but yeah, that reflection at the top, you're seeing the pergola kind of show in those frames, and that's just that black lining on the outsides that I wasn't a huge fan of. But if this was stabilized, I think you'd be in a better position here. Now with the shell casing, I do really appreciate that it's a fairly secure uh, clamp here. It 
you kind of get that feedback that you do have a solid seal. So I, I feel much, a little more confident with this one if I were to be taking it underwater uh, when it comes to that build. Um, it seems to kind of be over-designed. You don't really necessarily need a button for your, to switch into selfie mode since you could just do a triple press and get the same functionality. So that's a pr potentially another point of failure if anything were to go wrong with these buttons. But when kind of doing a comparison against the two, um, these are a little bigger if that is an issue for you, but they, they kind of both seem to be built in the same, same way when it comes down to either two gaskets, depending on how these are fastened um, in the assembly line, nonetheless. But feature-wise, uh, hinges seem pretty good. My only other issue as we take this out would be, uh, it's kind of, it's your luck uh, when it comes down to the actual integrity or the uh, quality of the the molding for, for your gasket. Mine has a, a few ripples on there. I don't think it's either an issue. It just seems like some, some bleed over within the press or so. Um, but you definitely have an easier time removing this uh, from the casing without feeling like you're risking um, affecting anything with your, your DGI. But overall, both of these cases do as they're advertised, but they do also both have their own shortcomings. Um, if you're gonna do a fixed location shoot, maybe a time lapse over time, the shell case is probably my recommendation since uh, there isn't any chance of you shifting and actually kind of blocking your field of view of your frame. So if you're gonna be either mounting this in one location, uh, shooting for one a long time and just don't sit just sitting on a tripod, uh, I feel more confident and safe with this, with, with that whole seal and kind of, even though I wish there was some more downforce with this clamp, uh, this just feels like an overall solid build, even though it's a bit over-engineered here. And with the dome case, even though you get less visual interruptions, uh, you will get some dis distortion overall, since uh, how, depending on how the light hits, you can, you can also see some reflection here. Your camera is gonna have the same um, issue as well. Um, this does feel a bit more lightweight. I do like the way the, uh, this one floats compared to, to this one, more of a nice little buoy or flotation device, but if I'm gonna be hanging out by the pool or just kind of taking this with me on more, more adventures or hikes where I'm kind of more free flow with the camera, I'd opt in for, for this one. Sadly, um, either way, whatever device you end up getting, you make sure you have the warranty since you're not, it's not a licensed DJI product. So you're at the whim of um, your, how these are built. So hopefully they, these don't fail on you. Um, if you decide to purchase either, links in the description to get some more information. But let me know uh, what your thoughts are. Uh, hopefully this helps you kind of decide and kind of give you some context. But thanks and have a good one.